Aston Villa are one of the most historic clubs in all of English football. They've got seven top division wins, the last one being in the 80s, which in the same period was also the time when they won the Champions League equivalent back in 1982. But in recent times, things haven't been as successful. In fact, only a few years ago, Villa found themselves just surviving in the Premier League because of an error from goal line technology. Since then, they have managed to kick on and achieved a brilliant Champions League finish last season, but still no trophies, and that's where I come in to try and win them the Premier League, but also restore them to Champions League glory. Now that might seem a bit ambitious in my five years as manager, but there's a lot going for us here at Villa, from the great stadium to the huge fan base and the brilliant facilities. And even though they weren't in recent times, Villa's trophy cabinet is stacked with plenty of awards, which show this club can definitely win something. And there's some brilliant players in this team already to help us towards that target. England striker Ollie Watkins is of course one of those as is French international Moussa Diaby, and of course one of the world's best goalkeepers in Emiliano Martinez. And their squad also contains quite a few players with some big potential. Homegrown product Jacob Ramsey could be a key player for the club, and Bubakar Kamara has potential but is already good enough for our first team. And that's not even talking about the likes of Pau Torres, Alex Moreno, John McGinn, Douglas Louise as well. We have got a stacked squad that Unai Emre has put together here, and even though we're not ready for the title just yet, we're going to try and compete for European football in season one. And that's about where we're predicted to finish. Eighth place is what the game has given us, 50 to one odds of winning the title, only the big six in Newcastle ahead of us, so we're already in a pretty good position here. Unfortunately though, we do only have a zero pound transfer budget in this first transfer window. Villa has spent most of their money already, so if I'm gonna make any sign-ins to help us get European football, I'm gonna have to sell some players on first. I actually think we did a really good job in this transfer window, so let's show you who we sold and who we signed. The first exit was Courtney House. The English 28-year-old has moved to join Fiorentina in Italy for 1.9 million. He was out on loan at Watford for a season, didn't do the best, so now we've bought him back and sold him on for some easy money. Perhaps controversially, I've also decided to move on Lucas Digne, the French 30-year-old I have sent to Villarreal for the season. He's gone for a five million pound loan fee, and there is the option there for them to buy him for 18 million and should they want to. Whether they'll sign him, I'm not too sure, but we already had Alex Moreno at left back and I signed another one, so it made sense for me to let Digne go for the year. But the craziest sale of all was Callum Chambers, the 28-year-old former Arsenal man. I was hoping to get, you know, three or four million from a championship side, whatever it might have been. In came out, it he had, offered him £625,000 a week and sent us a massive £14 million for the player, which... I mean, I think it's crazy. I don't know how we got that deal done, but we did. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Callum Chambers was out, and that was some good money for us to reinvest in the team. The first signing was our new backup left back, a younger player to play underneath Alex Moreno, not expecting the game time, but hopefully to develop well. This is Domagoj Bradaric, whose name I've probably butchered there, but he is a Croatian international, 23-year-old, who likes to get forward. We have signed him for £5 million from Salernitana out in Italy, where he spent a season and looks like a pretty good player. Whether it's going to work out for him who knows just yet but it wasn't the biggest spend ever so it's not the most pressure and it's a similar case for Alejandro Francis a 21 year old Spanish youngster with a lot of potential who we've picked up from Zaragoza for 5.5 million pounds now he's a right back he's not super attacking minded but he's very strong defensively so I think he'll be a brilliant addition to our team and this is a tactic that I'm starting with and what is currently considered our best 11 Emmy Martinez is obviously a fantastic goalkeeper Matty Cash is at right back probably a position that I'd want to upgrade upon. We've got Ezra Conza as our best centre-back alongside the Spaniard Pau Torres, recently signed by Villa, has played a year for them now in real life, but in the FM world, this is his first season. At left-back, our best option is supposedly Lucas Digne, but I think Alex Moreno is a very capable player for that position. With Kamara, who you've met, Douglas Louise in the midfield, who has in real life moved to Juventus, but after the first season. So what I'll try and do is to make this as realistic as possible is sell him on in season two. John McGinn partners him in centre Central midfield, one of the leaders at the club. And going forward, we've got Diaby, the on loan Zaniolo, who it didn't quite work out for in real life, but in FM is usually a pretty good player. And Ollie Watkins, alongside some great players on the bench. This is what the game considers our best 11, but I think we've got a very good squad here. But we are still predicted that eighth place finish. The transfers we've made haven't affected that, and that's to be expected. We bought youngsters with potential, as opposed to guys that are going to influence the team straight away. But our team is now ready to go for the first season. Of course, Emre guided Villa to a Champions League finish. I'm not sure we'll do that well in season one. We'll give it our best shot.
shot to try and kick off this aim towards winning the Champions League in five years. And our first season here actually has gone pretty well. Not as good as it went for Emery, mind you, but we had some great performances in the league, like against Manchester United at our stadium, where early on they took the lead from this great strike from Mason Mount. Not too long afterwards, though, one of our stars of the season, Bubakar Kamara, drove to the byline, did really well. He managed to stay fit all year, unlike real life. Pulled it across to Zaniolo, who made it 1-1. And just after half-time, a cheeky free kick found Ollie Watkins to put us in the lead. And with the game closing out, it was Zaniolo again on the left-hand side finding Watkins for his second that was 3-1 and one of many great performances we had this season that led to a brilliant sixth place finish in the Premier League not as good as what Villa got in real life but 68 points 21 wins 12 losses and five draws is something we can build upon for the future granted we were a big distance away from any of the five teams ahead of us but we were pretty clear of seventh so it was a very good year in the league even if not as good as real life but one place where we did overperform the real life performance was in the conference league league and we managed to make it all the way to the semi-final where we faced off against French club Toulouse and after a 1-1 draw in one leg we opened the scoring early on with John McGinn making it 1-0. Not too long afterwards Zaniolo was able to play a ball into the area it was headed away Watkins shot being deflected to Douglas Louise for two. Toulouse then did manage to pull a goal back Tessier going down the right hand side pulling it back to Boyer who made it 2-1 but the goals began to flow from there with Douglas Louise finding Pau Torres for our third of the game. Diaby drove forward and found John John McGinn who was able to drive from a long distance and make it 4-1. Ramsey then was able to play John McGinn through who was able to score his hat-trick on the 77th minute and to top it off with not too long left of the game it was John McGinn again finding Ramsey on the edge of the area. He found Francis whose long-range strike managed to beat the goalkeeper. That was 6-1. We managed to win 7-2 on aggregate and we were heading to a Conference League final. Easily our toughest test we faced off against Atalanta with Douglas Louise opening the scoring from the spot and that was the only goal of a game until the 90th minute. We thought we had a win, but Darun found De Catalier, who managed to put it past Martinez to equalise and put us to extra time. But with only a few minutes played of extra time, Ramsey was found in the area. He headed it home, and that was that. We managed to win the match 2 1, our first trophy, a Conference League win. Yes, most of the work was done already by the players that were already here at Villa, but we're going to take some credit for it. So there were some great performances all round, and definitely some performances we can build off for next year. John McGinn managed to score 16 goals goals, DRB with 17 and Douglas Louise with 10. Again, I am going to try and sell him in the coming window if I'm able to, to try and keep it as realistic as we can. Ollie Watkins got 29, but Zaniolo did manage to score 18. That's going to be a big loss for us when he leaves at the end of his loan. He won't be staying permanently, but thankfully we have got £48 million to do some transfer business, £129,000 of wage budget as well. There's a lot of money there to improve this team, so I'm going to spend it and see who we can bring in to level up this Villa team to the next level. Before I show you the transfers for season two, though, you all know what's coming if you watch the channel. This is the part where I ask you guys to do me a huge favor. These videos take a long time to make, and if you can give me the best support you can here on YouTube by smashing that like button, I really would appreciate it. It takes a few seconds to do, it's free, and it just helps me massively. And make sure as well you are subscribed if you haven't already. We do weekly rebuilds here on the channel, so if you enjoy this, you'll likely enjoy what we have to come, so make sure you hit that button as we push for 40k subs. And remember as well, every rebuild we do is based on your suggestions so comment down below who you'd like to see next and there's a good chance I will get round to doing your team and don't worry I'm nearly done but the final thing I just want to mention is there is a Patreon linked in the description over there you can support me as a creator in return you'll get access to all of the save files from season one two three four and five from every rebuild we've done so you can take over and give these a go yourself or try and continue after we finish these rebuilds so thank you to anybody who does any of those things that we've mentioned but let's go and have a look at these transfers that we made. Firstly, we saw the departure of Morgan Sanson, who triggered some kind of option to join Nice permanently. He'd been on loan there, 3.4 million. We never really had a hand in it, but he's now gone. As has Matty Cash, who I would have liked to improve upon anyway at right back, but when a club like Atletico Madrid comes in and offers us a big fee of 30 million, it's hard to turn it down. Rising to 42, he wasn't even the best last year. He was good, mind you, but you know what? I'll definitely take that money, but that is a first-team starter that we now had to replace. 
place. And I said that I would try and sell on Douglas Louise if I could. I could get nowhere near the money that I wanted for him, but we did manage to move him on to Saudi Arabia, to Al Qadzia. £31 million is the fee. He was good for his last year, a very important player, someone that we've lost. And even though I would have liked to got more money for him, I thought I had to sell him this window to keep it as real to real life as possible. But that was about £65 million worth of sales to add on to our £40 million transfer budget. We had a lot of money now to spend to improve this team. I started off by adding Cesar Huerta, a Mexican 23-year-old international left winger who is known for his goal scoring. We have bought him in from Pumas out in Mexico, where I say he's known for his goal scoring. He really isn't. The guy's barely scored, but in game, he has got very high finishing for a left-sided forward. He's joined us for 8.75 million, not a bad fee at all, and a nice addition to have in this squad. And Matty Cash's replacement is going to be Ferdi Kadioglu, who can play both left back and right back, so gives us plenty of options. But the Turkish international, age 24, decided to join us over the likes of PSG and also Barcelona, who were interested in him. I think we've got a great deal here from Fenerbahce, 30 million quid for one of the more elite fullbacks in world football. But our final and biggest signing of the window was our replacement for Douglas Louise. We have bought in Angelo Stiller, our new number six, 23 years of age, a German under 21 international with brilliant passing ability, good defensively too. Great first touch and composure in the midfield, a good left foot. He has joined for a fee of 40 million pounds, 37.5 mil rising to 40. Great for Stuttgart last year. And for us, I think is going to be an excellent addition to our midfield. And the game does class him good enough as able to break into our first 11 because our best team supposedly now would be Emi Martinez in goal, Cadioglu, Concer, Torres and Moreno at the back with a midfield of Stiller, Kamara and McGinn, DRB, Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins going forward. I don't think we've completely overhauled the squad and made huge changes across the board, but I think if you offered me the squad we have now compared to what we had last season, this to me is definitely an upgrade. So I feel like we're heading in the right direction. And the game seems to agree too, because we are still predicted eighth place, but now only 33 to one odds of winning the title. So according to the game then, our squad has clearly got better, but does it mean we'll have better performances on the pitch? Let's find out. And the answer to whether our team would play better this season was yes, we were great in both the Premier League but also the Europa League that we were competing in this season and once again we managed to make a European semi-final. And it was Wolfsburg that we faced in the semi-final of the Europa League and very early on we got off to a great start. 1-1 in the first leg but in the second leg Bailey managed to tap it in after 5 minutes. With only 10 minutes on the clock, Angelo Stiller received the ball on the edge of the area, found Jacob Ramsey who managed to drive home to make it two. And before the half time was closed out. Again, Angelo Stiller showing great passing range, finding Leon Bailey, who played it across to Diaby. That made it 3-0. They did pull a goal back, but we won the tie 4-2, and we headed into a Europa League final against none other than Nice. Now, I was pretty confident of a win, but they got off to a flyer in the 68th minute, scoring from the penalty spot, and we tried our best to get back in the game. Plenty of chances, but nothing would fall for us, and in the 86th minute, Jeremy Boga found Turam in the area, who put it past Martinez, and unfortunately, that was it. We lost two in the final. We did win the Conference League in year one, but in year two, the European trophy was not to be. But the Premier League was a different story. We were nowhere near flawless, but we went into the final games of the season on around 75 points, knowing if we won our last two games, we would win the title. And that was really crazy for us to say. In season two, to already be competing for a title was crazy. Even though 70 points would never nearly be enough, we did manage to win one game against Brighton through Dendonka, and that now meant the title was in our hands. Arsenal, with three points behind us, if we were to win our final match of the season away to Crystal Palace, the title would be ours. And we came out firing because not too long after the start of the game, Diaby received the ball in the box and put us 1-0 up. But just after half time, a Crystal Palace free kick found Ozo, who managed to equalise for the club. We were determined though, we wanted this title to be ours. Alex Moreno found Kamara, who managed to play through Diaby. It was him again, and we were winning 2-1. But the 74th minute rolled by, and a Crystal Palace penalty managed to equalise for them. And there was one final highlight, but it was Crystal Palace. Tyrick Mitchell throwing it across to Richarlison, who scored. We lost the game 3-2. We had to pray that Arsenal hadn't beat Liverpool. And unfortunately, they had. They had managed to do it. The table finished with both of us on 78 points. We were two goal difference behind them. And if we have a look at Arsenal's schedule, you will see they did beat Liverpool 3-2 on the last game of the season, which was so unfortunate. Arsenal win the title. We were so close. Obviously, us losing by a goal and then winning by a goal 
goal was enough for them to overtake us on goal difference. So the title would not be ours. Somehow we came so close with a pretty low points total too, but we just missed out and that was absolutely gutting because our season was so good until those last two games. We could have had a Premier League and a Europa League, but we did not get either. We also got knocked out of the fifth round of the FA Cup by Brentford and a third round exit in the Carabao to Liverpool showed we never really had a chance of winning those, but we can't be too disheartened. It was a very good season with Watkins getting 30 goals, Kamara with 11, Diaby with 23, Angelo Stiller having a great first year at the club as well, starting 41 games, and even a youngster getting a chance, Kosta Niledkovic, I don't really know who he is, but he's a Serbian 19 year old right back who we assigned a long time ago by the looks of it, was loaned out in the first year, and now he's starting to get some game time for us in that position. So there's a lot of positives we can take, we can't get too disheartened by those two games, but we are going in to season three now with 59 million pounds of wage budget, we proved we can compete for the Premier League, or was it a fluke? We're going to find out, but first we need to make this team a little bit better. And it was once again a super busy window. We sold nearly 100 million pounds of players and spent over 100 million on new incomings. Going out first was Buendia, a player that never really got a look in in our team since this rebuild started. Not rated very highly in FM at all. He has now moved to Dusseldorf in the Bundesliga for 2.1 million. A big waste really considered what Villa paid for him initially, but he only played what? Four games one season, seven games the next, three starts in both of those years. We had to get him off the books. And Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Braderick either. He decided he wanted out. He wanted more game time. He wasn't getting much of it last season. He's moved to Sociedad, 4.4 million, rising to six. We paid five million pounds for him. So it balances out. It didn't work, but we didn't really lose anything from it. Lucas Digne has left permanently now though. He has gone to join RB Leipzig, sent a season out on loan at Villarreal. They didn't sign him. He came back to us and played 12 times as a starter, 19 times off the bench and wanted more game time. So he goes away to Leipzig for a fee of 11, rising to 14 million. And Cesar Huerta has also left us. The Mexican 24 year old now did sign for us only last year, but again, another one that didn't really work out. He didn't play as much as he wanted to, didn't really suit our system in the end, and he has moved on for 15 million pounds to Brentford. So nearly doubling our money out of a player that never really played. So again, good business, even if it looks a bit strange. And we also lost Ferdi Kadioglu, another incoming from last year, moving on. Not much you can do when PSG come in for him and he wanted to go. But what I find crazy is the fact that he had the choice to join PSG before and chose us a year later. He said he'd be upset if he couldn't play for them. He played 26 times last season, 24 as a starter, and now moves on for 10 million pounds more than what we paid, rising potentially to 43 million. Not bad, but a big player to lose. But I think we've done pretty well with our incomings. Firstly, Alex Terzic was our next addition to the team, a 25-year-old Serbian fullback who was signed for a fee of around 13 million pounds from RB Salzburg, where he's been very good in Austria, getting some football under his belt there. And now he comes in as our backup left back behind Alex Moreno. We also bought in Stelios Andreu, the Cypriot international 25 year old centre back who is going to be one of our best centre backs at the club now. He is valued at 50 million and we picked him up for only 14 million pounds, rising to 17 from the Belgian divisions from Charleroi. An American international has joined us too. Taylor Booth has signed for a fee of around 27 million pounds from Utrecht in the Netherlands, where he's been exceptional for two seasons in the Eredivisie. I think he's going to be a great addition, very versatile as well, can play anywhere on the pitch, so we'll hopefully get plenty of minutes. Now, Huerta replacement is an improvement in my eyes. This is Dylan Bakwa. On the left-hand side, we play an inverted winger as opposed to an inside forward, which Huerta was, so I think Bakwa will suit this more with his good crossing ability, his dribbling, and his first touch. He can play a pass. He's got electric pace. The 22-year-old Frenchman has signed for 35 mil from the club Strasbourg in France, where he's been great for them and hopefully we'll take the step up to the Prem. And our final signing was Manu Kone, an unbelievable midfield option, 24 years of age, valued at 50 million quid with great attributes that we have picked up from the Bundesliga, where he hasn't been great for Mönchengladbach in game, but is clearly a very good player and hopefully it will work out for us. 47.5 million pounds was the fee. It was a lot of money, but I think he is going to be a great player for us. And I feel like we've definitely improved the squad in this window. Maybe not
not necessarily in terms of star quality in R11, but the squad as a whole, I think, is in a pretty good place now. Martinez is in goal with a back four of Moreno, Torres, Conza, and Francis, who has developed quite well, but I wouldn't think would be our starting right back, but apparently is the best at the club now. So maybe that's a position I should have focused on more in the window. Kamara, Kone, McGinn is a very strong midfield with Diaby, Bakwa and Ollie Watkins with some great players in the reserves and the bench too. Let's see if the game also thinks we've made some good business here. They are predicting us to finish ninth place. So we've gone down in the league position, but we are now 25 to one odds of winning the title. So that's got better, even though we've dropped further down the table. Everton have now overtaken us. No idea who they must have signed. Oh, there you go. Benjamin Sesko now plays for Everton under the Sean Dyche. That's why they're now considered ahead of us. But either way, our team is now ready. We've spent the money and we're heading into season three, knowing after this, we've only got two more years to try and win the Premier League title. And this season was definitely a mixed bag, but after finishing in second place last year, we were given for the first time an opportunity to play Champions League football when we actually made it to the knockout rounds of the UCL. And we faced off against French giant PSG in the first knockout round. Not the nicest game to get, but Ollie Watkins got us off to a flyer after only six minutes and we won the home leg 1-0. Unfortunately, PSG did then beat us 4-1. So we might have made the knockouts, but we stand no chance yet against these elite clubs. And it was also a pretty similar story in the Prem because there were some really poor performances all around. You saw us early on in this rebuild beat Manchester United 3-1. Well, this time we went to Old Trafford and Hoyland made it 1-0 after only 30 minutes. We did manage to pull a goal back just after half-time through Alejandro Francis on the left-back position this time, darting in and equalising. But that was really all we created all game and Manchester United punished us for that with Mason Mount receiving the ball in the 76th minute, going forward to Hoyland and he scored a brilliant goal to make it 2-1. And with time ticking away, Mason Mason Mount found Bruno Fernandes who took it away for 3-1 and that was one of many really disappointing results this season that ended up costing us and getting us a 6th place finish. 66 points, not bad for a Villa team, don't get me wrong, but considering where we were in previous seasons, it was really unfortunate. We did win the Community Shield, which is something that we can take beating Arsenal in penalties there. But the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, we didn't do great in. I mean, the FA, we did make the semi-final, Man City beat us there, but just a really underwhelming year. We will be playing European football ball again next year in the Europa League but just really was a big back step for the club. Was it other teams getting better or our team getting worse? I don't know but Ollie Watkins was our best player this year with 35 goals. Outside of that we are missing a lot of the goals we got in other years. Diaby chipped in with 10, Bakko got 13, Ramsey with 10 and but outside of that I mean Kamara drops down to only three goals this season. Manu Kone scored five. It's not the worst in the world but it really just wasn't a great year and does make me think now with only two seasons to go that we might really Really struggle to take this Villa team where I'm trying to get them. The only saving grace is there is another big transfer pot. £57 million pounds to spend good Premier League money that we can use to reinvest in the team but we need to make sure we get these transfers right as we try and push on in Season 4. And again, it was another very big window. Nearly 100 million of sales, 100 million pounds spent, some big changes in our squad. Diego Carlos has left the club at the end of his contract to finish off his career in Brazil. Dendonka has moved on. He's gone to play for Stuttgart, age 31, for a fee of 5 million pounds. A player I didn't know too much about, to be honest, Jamal Dean Gimo was sold by our under 23s manager for 7 million to Brentford, which is a great move there. We've already lost Terzic, who signed last season, but has already moved on on a 350 grand a week contract at Al Had, who signed another one of our players, but we do make a healthy profit, making nearly £30 million from him when we only spent about 10. And Yori Tielemans has also left in the final year of his contract. He's gone to Arsenal for a fee of £30 million. They supposedly wanted him when he did leave Leicester to join Villa, so now it's kind of gone full circle. He has signed for Arsenal, but I don't think he's the biggest loss ever. But we have signed some real star quality now to help our team. Firstly, Joshua Zerksey provides some real competition for the first time to Ollie Watkins. The Netherlands international, 25 years of age now. It's been okay for Bologna in Italy. We have picked him up on a free contract and I think that's a great deal for a very good forward that can deputise for Watkins when needed. And we've also got an extra wing option, an experienced one as well. Serge Gnabry has signed for us, age 31. He has joined Villa, formerly of Arsenal of course, then Bayern Munich, where he's been good for a number of years but has stopped playing in recent seasons. So we're delighted to get him on a free. We do have a new left back though and one that I'm hoping we can continue with for a long time 
time, it's the Italian international 25-year-old Fabiano Parisi who we've picked up from Fiorentina for a big fee of 40 million. Now, he has been pretty good when he's played, but hasn't played the most football for them. But our scouts recommended him really highly. If you don't know, in these videos, I only go based off our scouts' recommendations. So if they say he's good, we've gone for it, and fingers crossed it's going to work out. But the best player we signed is Kylian Sedilia, who I've seen in plenty of saves, but he's never looked this good. Clearly, he's had some great development here, coming in as a four and a half star player, able to play in that defensive right back role that we use, or as a ball playing defender. He signs for a big fee of £60 million from Freiburg. It's a lot of money, but he's been exceptional out in Germany. And I really do think this is a statement signing that can tie our defence together and help drivers towards that league title. And Sedilia continues the French connection in this squad with Kamara, Kone, Diaby's in there as well. Back was also a French player, even though he's not an international just yet. But our team is starting to really come together. Martinez is still in goal with a back four of Sedilia, Conza, Pau Torres and Parisi. Kamara, McGinn and Kone make up a strong midfield with Diaby, Watkins and even Jacob Ramsey in that best 11, who's came along really nicely in this save now. He is one of our best players. Now we are still predicted that ninth place finish, 25 to 1 odds of winning the title. Everton are now fifth place predicted, 13 to 1 odds. No idea what Sean Dyche is working over there, but clearly more than we're doing at Villa. But we're going to give it our best shot. Two years to go to try and win the Premier League and the UCL. It's looking unlikely. We've been right up there before, even though last season looks like it might have been a fluke. We're going to try again. And this year was the best we have had yet, in my opinion. Once again, we were in the Europa League, which was more our level than the Champions League. We managed to make it to a semi-final against Spurs. And after a 1-1 draw at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Watkins put us in the lead after 13 minutes. He then scored from the spot after 19 minutes to put us 2-0 in the lead. Madison then played a corner through, which ended up falling out to Kulazewski, a deflected shot making it 2-1. We did manage to win on aggregate. We were through to the Europa League final, but we were facing off against Sean Dyer is mega Everton team who seems to be the other side that we're keeping an eye on in this rebuild and we dominated the game 2.5 xg to Everton's 0.5 but it took all the way into extra time for the first goal of the game where Bailey powered it home with a brilliant volley that went past Pickford and that was enough to win us the game we had won the Europa League final add that to our conference league win and now with one season left we just need to win the Champions League and we have won all three European trophies with Villa but we were also up for another trophy this year because we were back on the grime for the Premier League title, having a great season, winning tons of matches and it proved how far we came because this year against Arsenal we took a 1-0 lead after 30 minutes and McGinn's corner was played in which found Sedilia who managed to head it back to Jacob Ramsey who powered home to make it 2. The game after that we faced Newcastle and once again we played some brilliant football, managing to win the game 3-2 with this goal from McGinn being the pick of a bunch. And I'd like to then say you know what it went to a really close title race where we just won on the last day of the season. That isn't what happened because we managed to win the title with 98 points way clear of anything we got before only two losses all season beating Man City by seven points at the top of the table the year when we nearly won it we had 78 points this year we had 20 points more which is incredible a brilliant season five draws two losses and um, all of these games that we didn't win are against really good teams other than maybe Palace but even they are a pretty good team we managed to win 31 of our matches an incredible year we deserve a title I have no idea where the form came from, but I am not complaining at all. We won the Europa League and the Premier League. We've got the Conference League too. If we can win the Carabao, the FA and the UCL in our last season, we'll have done a clean sweep. And I think the biggest change this year was the amount of goals that we were scoring across the squad. I mean, Manu Kone got 13, Parisi from left back got six, Diaby 14, Watkins 32, eight from Stiller, four from Kamara, four Pau Torres, 12 from Jacob Ramsey, Booth and Sedilia scoring two each, Bakwa with nine four from Bailey John McGinn with 13 another nine from Xerxes we had goals from absolutely everywhere Sedilia was our big money transfer it didn't quite work out for him in terms of being our best player but he was very solid and that made us get the title in the end we had a solid defense a very strong attack and we have done it we have won the Europa League and the Premier League but we go into our final season with another 66 million pounds to spend we can do a lot still to improve this squad and maybe push one more time for that title and hopefully for UCL glory it's been a few rebuilds in a row now where I failed at last hurdle but maybe this time we can make it happen.
Before we see the final season's transfers though, I just want to ask you, as this will be the last time that I get the chance to, if you could, like the video and subscribe if you've enjoyed to this point. It really would help me and the channel and I massively appreciate it as we push for that 40k subscriber target. But let's see the transfers. The first one that made is a bit of cash, Dante Orr, another one sold by our under 23s manager. He's gone to Hull for 5 million, not going to complain about that at all. Serge Gnabry didn't quite like it here at Villa, so he's already gone back out. He's gone to Saudi Arabia for a fee of 10.75 million and who can blame him after only five appearances last year. Al Ali have also taken Taylor Booth of our hands, giving him a 500 grand a week contract and paying 90 million pounds for him. It's a loss on what we paid originally, but he was never the man that I thought he would be for the club, even though he played pretty well for us when called upon. But the biggest sale was Pau Torres. In the last year of his contract, he said he wanted a new challenge and you know what? He had done more than enough for the club for us to decide to let him go. The left footed centre back was an elite player, but he now moves on to go and join Al Halal on £775,000 a week for 65 million quid. What a player, what a servant, goodbye to him. But don't you worry, we had some stars coming in. Let's start off with the most underwhelming of the lot. Luis Junior is our new backup goalkeeper to deputise for Martinez. He joins from Tottenham for 18.25 million. And for anyone that continues this rebuild on Patreon, you have got a very good new gem wonder kid on your hands here. This is our new number seven, 19 year old Jean-Paul Lahai, who we have picked up from Nantes in the French division, where he's been great in the second tier. 13 million quid was the fee, a release clause deal for a very talented player. We needed a new centre-back though to replace Pau Torres, so why not one of the best young defenders in the world, Lenny Yoro. 21-year-old Frenchman, we love a French player here at Villa. He has signed after a great season at Lille for 50 million, rising to 53. A lot of money, but there is a lot of talent to be bought here. And if that wasn't already enough, why not add one of the other world superstars of his age, 20-year-old Lamine Yamal. What a player. He was transfer listed at Barcelona for 63 million. We have bought him in, uh, only played, what, five, six, seven, eight, nine times across the course of this whole rebuild for Barca. No idea what's been going on. Clearly a good player, maybe not as good as he is being in real life, but here... I think we could still get ourselves a bargain, even for 63 mil. I have faith in him. And the squad we've assembled, I think, is unbelievable now. Martinez in goal, Cedilia, Consa, Francis, and Parisi. Shout out Francis, by the way. Just playing lots of football for us over the years. Five million pounds he cost, continuing to get better, and a real servant at the club. Alongside him, you've got Kamara, Kone, and Ramsey with Diaby, Bakwa, and Ollie Watkins, and some great players on the bench. Andrio, Stiller, Zerzi, Lenny Oro as well. Leon Bailey's gone out on loan for the season to Monaco, but we can forgive it. We've now got, of course, the main man that is Lamine Yamal. The team is ready to go. We won the league last season. We've got Champions League football this year and we are predicted still ninth place, 16 to 1 odds of winning the title. It's not quite where I'd want to be, but we know we can overperform that. We're going to aim for the league title again and try and win that Champions League in our final season. Can we do it? Well, there's a few things we can talk about this season, some positives, some negatives. So let's start off with the negatives. The Champions League, we were pretty good. We made it all the way to the quarterfinals this year. We were drawn against Bayern Munich and managed to get a 1-1 draw in the first leg, meaning it was all to play for in leg number two. But of course, Bayern are a very strong team and in the Allianz, we crumbled in the 93rd minute of all times. Eze Abede going forward, finding Harry Kane. He broke our hearts. We came crashing out of the UCL. We weren't going to win that, but you know what? It was a good effort and I think another season or so and we could be right up there. We can now compete with these massive clubs. And speaking of big clubs, we had a chance to beat another one as we played in the semi-final of the FA Cup. The first chance really for us in a domestic cup competition and Watkins managed to pounce on a defensive error to make it one. And then a free kick routine from Parisi found Kone who drove into the area and made it two. And that put us in the FA Cup final where we were facing off against Norwich. And I thought this would be an easy win, but after 73 minutes and no goals, Norwich had the chance from the spot. Josh Sargent stepping up against Emmy Martinez, but of course he saved it. And it took until the 93rd minute, our own penalty from Ollie Watkins. He scored and he managed to guide us to an FA Cup title. That's a new trophy to add to the cabinet. So no Champions League, but we do have an FA Cup for the first time in a long time for Aston Villa. But I know what you're thinking, how did we do in the Premier League? Well, to sum it up, one of our last games of the season was away at the Etihad against Man City and Kamara scored a brilliant goal to make it 1-0. Away to Man City is no easy game, but for our team now, it kind of was. I mean, Lamine Yamal made it two after 
after 60 minutes. And again, it was that man again on the right wing, Lamine Yamal, toying with the Manchester City defence, taking it to the byline, finding Francis, who crossed for Stiller. He made it free. That was a comfortable win away against Manchester City. And that was one of many great wins this season that led us to once again win the Premier League title with 87 points, clear of Arsenal with 81 points. Not as good of a year as we had. And if this was last season, we wouldn't have won the title, I don't think. But this year we did. Lamine Yamal being one of the stars of the show. This guy is now considered one of the best at the club. We did get a bargain for 63 million, 17 goals, seven assists, and the guy is only 20. He's now wanted by Spurs. No way will we sell him to them. This guy is an unreal player. The fans already love him apparently. So I feel like we've made a brilliant signing here for Villa. He was one of many great players because this season we had Diaby getting 22. What a performer he's been over the years for us. We had Kamara, Jacob Ramsey, still doing amazing stuff in this Aston Villa shirt for us. Now in England's national. Parisi, Lehigh as well, having a very good first season, getting lots of football under his belt and already developing into an unreal player for you guys to try and use. Two France caps, two goals for him as well. Not bad at all. Overall, this squad is on fire. 10 goals from Bakwa, eight from Stiller, Watkins with 29, Sedilia with one goal as well. For those wondering, the finances at the club are in a good place. 29 million pounds in the overall balance. The debts and loans, there's nothing really there to note. If we have a look at the facilities, I've tried to improve them. The board weren't super interested in it, but I have managed to improve them a little bit over our time here. Emmy Martinez and John McGinn are now icons of the club with Lamine Yamal already on the favoured personnel list after one season. So we won plenty of trophies at Aston Villa. We didn't win the UCL, but I think everything else makes up for it. I've had a great time rebuilding them. Let me know who you want to see next. Like the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.